Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the University of Nottingham PGCR webinar. My name is Helen Spiropoulos. I'm the admissions manager at Stafford Global. Um, we normally do have uh, Dr. Allison, who actually joins us from University of Nottingham, and she has actually sent her apology. She has been called into a very urgent meeting, and unfortunately, she could not join us this evening. Okay, so I'm actually going to take over the presentation this evening and how we are going to conduct this uh, webinar is I'm just going to briefly introduce you to Stafford and who we are and then I'm going to take you through the program very briefly. Now towards the end of the presentation I will be able to open up the portal for you to type out any questions that you'd like to ask me and I will be looking at these questions quite um, carefully because I will actually put them together. A lot of the questions are identical, so I will start grouping them together. Okay, so let's actually get started. Now, who is Stafford Global? Who are we? We were established in 1993 and we are a resource center for distance learning education in the Middle East. Now, we are currently the resource center for six UK universities. Now, one of which is the University of Nottingham. And we do have a very, very long standing relationship with the university. We do offer a variety of programs, um, ranging from certificates to diplomas, bachelor degrees, MBAs, MEC, right through until doctorates. So we do actually offer quite a lot of uh, programs that would suit your personal as well as your professional needs. Now, the mere fact that you are here with us this evening means that you have been in touch with one of our experienced academic consultants. And our function is to assist you throughout the application process and to ensure that you get that very, very important unconditional offer. We do also offer some academic and some administrative support as well. So you really do have good local support. Okay, now just a little bit about the University of Nottingham. Um, it is placed 82nd in the world, ranked the top 1% universities international, and it is consistently in the top rankings worldwide. It is described as a truly global university, and it is internationally recognized. Now, the mere fact that it is internationally recognized means that the qualification that you will be obtained will also be internationally recognized. They are very, very high in teaching excellence. What that means is that they normally get gold status because they have got very, very strong academic support. Okay, now a little bit about the PGCE itself. Now, the PGCE stands for Postgraduate Certificate in Education International. It is a master's level program, which means it is 60 credits towards a master's. And it is a blended learning program, which is a professional enrichment for educators specifically for educators that are working in countries outside of the UK. The beauty about this particular program is there are face-to-face -face meetings and tutorials online with the UK tutors, but at the moment, due to the COVID situation, these face-to-face -face meetings are conducted virtually, very similar to something that we are having here this evening. These workshops are conducted directly by the UK tutors using the university system. Now, these face-to-face -face workshops or meetings are mandatory, and you do have two face-to-face -face meetings throughout your program. Now, the course does focus on reflecting on individual practice through theory, and it also enables you to compare teaching approaches in different situations in your classroom environment. Now, it does consist of three compulsory 20 credit modules. The program is 12 months in duration, 
And the model that is in educational aims and values in international contexts, understanding learning and teaching in international contexts, and inquiring into educational practice in international contexts. Each module is assessed by an assessment or an assignment. There's a lot of reading and writing activities involved in it, and you have a 4,000 word assignment that needs to be submitted at the end of each module. The assignments are actually submitted online with the university portal. So there's no need for you to send it to Stafford at all. It all gets managed directly by the university. Now, as we mentioned, that this particular program is 60 credits towards a master's. So the beauty about the program is once you have successfully completed, you do have the opportunity to further your education into a master's level. So you can get credits towards the MA in education or MA in special needs or the MA in educational leadership at Nottingham by the University of Nottingham. All materials that you will be provided is uh, online on the university Moodle system. Um, the Moodle system is available to you 24 hours a day, so you have access uh, throughout the week, whatever time, whatever day you wish to um, actually start your, your studies. All materials and resources are also available um, through the university online library. You will also have access to your tutors who are available Monday to Friday. They are available via Moodle, which is the learning platform, and you may be able to contact them by email or telephonically as well. There are individual tutor supports, group discussions online, and this is exactly where the, the collaboration happens between the students and the tutors. It's also very good networking opportunities, and you may be able to share your ideas with other teachers across the globe. Okay, what are the entry requirements for this particular program? Now, you do require to have a bachelor degree from an approved institution, and it must be on a second class honours level. Now, if English is not your first language, you would require to submit an IELTS uh, academic of 6.5 or anything that is very similar to that level. Very important entry requirement as well is to have access to a classroom. So you must be currently teaching. Now for applicants who do not have access to a classroom, you may look for a volunteer position and uh, that would be accepted at the university. Now, what does it mean to have regular access to a classroom? There's a lot of teachers at the moment that are teaching online from home, and this will be accepted. Okay. Now, for non-standard applications, now these are applications where applicants do not have a bachelor degree, but they do have vast years of working experience. Now, the university would be looking at applicants who have approximately seven years of teaching experience. So it is very important when you do submit an application or you do get in contact with Stafford Global, our academic consultants will be able to assess whether you'll get into this program on a standard entry, meaning via your academics, or on a non-standard entry, meaning via your vast years of working experience. Now, what are the documents that are required to be submitted? Your degree certificate and academic transcript is very, very important. If your degree certificate has been issued in any other language besides English, it would be required that you have it translated. You do require one reference, and this can either be an academic or a work-related reference. Somebody that actually works with you or your principal, 
um, uh, is, is perfect as, as a reference. A personal statement of approximately 500 to 700 words. Now, this is mainly the reasons why you want to do this particular program. How is this program going to assist you in your career? So this is actually quite an important document that the university will review. A detailed CV, it is important to indicate all your teaching roles and responsibilities and to make sure that you indicate the years that you have been teaching because that again the university would want to see um, your, your teaching experience. There is a Nottingham uh, application form that requires to be submitted, which is a standard document. They do also require a passport copy, and it must be valid, must not be expired, as well as the proof of English. And as mentioned, the proof of English can be an IELTS academic of 6.5 or any similar um, uh, you know, formal English examination. Okay, so we are currently accepting applications for March of 2022. The program does commence on the 1st of March, application deadline being the 20th of February. Now, very, very important about this particular cohort is that we, are, we do have limited places available. The university only accepts 100 students per cohort, specifically for, from the Middle East. So if you are going to apply, you do need to send your application documents as soon as possible. They do book up quite quickly, so we would require you to try and get as many documents into us as quickly as possible. Okay, and uh, as uh, mentioned, there are uh, two very important mandatory workshops that need to be um, attended. The first one would be March of 2022. The dates would need to be confirmed uh, by the university and the subsequent um, workshops will be towards the end of the year. And again, the university panel will be able to provide you with the dates as well as the times um, whilst you're busy studying. So you will get that information way in advance. Now, if applicants do apply via Stafford Global, you do get an exclusive grant and uh, the fees are payable in a flexible monthly instalment. Now, your academic consultant will be able to email you the relevant information as well as the fee structure. So you'll be able to see exactly how the fee payment structure is scheduled. When you do apply, you do require to submit an application fee of 735 uh, dirhams, which is um, submitted uh, together with that application. Okay, so I have managed to actually get through the program um, quite briefly, and I would like to actually open up the portal now for all uh, possible questions that you actually may have for me at this point. So please do type out as many questions um, as possible because this would um, also assist other students that maybe have similar questions as well. Okay, so very important question that always comes up and I can see it's uh, quite a common one is, uh, will I be able to go to the graduation at the university? How do I get my degree certificate? Okay, so this is a very, very common question. Yes, so once you have successfully completed your qualification, the graduation department will definitely be um, giving you an invitation to go through to the university. You do have the choice to go and attend the graduation at the university, a very auspicious occasion. Um, if you do not wish to attend the graduation, then uh, your degree will be posted through to you. Okay. Right, I currently work in an early years setting, especially a nursery school. Will this be an acceptable classroom setting? Yes, absolutely. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what level you are teaching. So if you're a nursery school, high school, secondary school, um, even at university level, that's fine, as long as you can demonstrate that you do have access to a classroom. That would be perfect, Not, no problem at all. 
Okay, so another question is regarding the workshop. What would happen if I do miss the workshop? Okay, now these workshops are actually mandatory. So it is very, very important that you do make yourself available. When are these workshops scheduled? Now workshops are scheduled Friday and a Saturday. Now the Friday session will only start at 2 p.m. Okay, so it's 2 p.m. UAE time. Okay, so it does give um, a lot of teachers the time to actually attend this workshop. The Saturday workshop will also start at 2 p.m. They normally last um, until 5 or 6 p.m. And there obviously is uh, breaks in between. Okay. So, if you cannot attend this particular workshop, then it is advisable that you look at attending and applying at another cohort. It is very, very important to actually attend these workshops because it does form part of your studies. Okay, so I hope I've answered that question. All right, I'm currently completing my bachelor degree. I'm required to complete a degree in order to teach. When is the next course as I don't have a requirement? Okay, all right. Um, so yes, you do require to have a bachelor degree as mentioned so that you can um, you know, enter the program. However, if you can demonstrate seven years or more teaching experience, then we can actually still get you into the program based on that work experience. So please do send your CV through to, to me or to your academic consultant. Let us have a look at this. Um, CV and if you do qualify based on that work experience then you're very welcome to attend and apply um, for the March intake. If you cannot attend the March um, intake then the next one would be round about September of, of this year. Okay, and a question regarding um, IELTS. Okay, I have two questions. The first is regarding my IELTS. What if I didn't score in my coming exam the required score? Can I start my course and then take the examination? Okay. All right, so the score that is required by the university is an IELTS of 6.5. What we do advise is to try and sit, uh, sit with another um, exam. Could be an IELTS or it could be a TOEFL, um, or you could look at any other English requirement. Uh, uh, your, your academic consultant will be able to give you a list of the examinations that uh, is accepted by the university. Unfortunately, the university will not permit you to start a course without meeting the requirements. So you do have to meet that particular requirement. Um, so do get in touch with the academic consultant and they'll be able to provide you with a list of other tests that you can possibly look at. Um, one of the other tests that a lot of the applicants uh, do also look at is the TOEFL RBT, which is an internet-based test that you probably could look at. Okay, following question. Okay, can I take the classes in my own time? I am currently teaching in the language center and I'm, I'm afraid I might not be able to join the class. Now, Remember the program is blended learning, which means that you will have the time to, to study on your own accord. Okay, you do have access to your Moodle and to your study material 24 seven. So you can access this at any time. Um, you have to dedicate at least 15 to, to 25, uh, anything between 15 and 25 hours a week dedication to the program. So if applicants uh, allocate 15 hours a week, at least one or one and a half hours um, a day dedication to your studies is fine. The only time, as mentioned, that you do need to make sure that you are available for face-to-face for -face tutoring is uh, for the workshops, which do occur over a Friday and a Saturday. So in terms of you studying the program, it is very flexible and it must fit around your personal and your professional needs. 
Okay. Um, the next question is, um, I have uh, scored the PT test 49%. Is this eligible? Okay. So, Aisha, what we would need to do is actually look at the comparison tables. Okay. So, if you do send a message to your academic consultant, what we would do is then look to see if this is um, close to the IELTS of 6.5. So, there is a specific comparison table that we do look at please do try and send that through to us and then we will be able to tell you if um, uh, you have met the English requirement okay can I apply if my bachelor degree is not in education yes absolutely absolutely the university does not um, want a bachelor degree that is specific in education you could have a bachelor degree in engineering, you could have a bachelor degree um, in uh, interior design, it does not matter as long as you do meet the requirements, meaning a bachelor degree from an approved institution, as well as um, having some teaching experience and making sure that you've got access to the classroom. So do not worry about um, what uh, your, uh, your bachelor degree is in, okay. I am currently residing in India. Can I join the program? Oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. You're very welcome to. We'd love to, to have you on our program. Uh, we do have students joining the particular cohort from across the globe. Um, we have had students from uh, Africa. We've had students from Europe. Uh, we've had Azerbaijan. We've had Australia. We've even had America. So, yes, you absolutely um, uh, can, can join the program as long as you meet the end entry criteria. Um, do we need an A-levels? Okay, so when you actually are applying for the program, Emma, you do not require to submit any school certification. Okay, they do require just a bachelor degree and your transcripts. Okay, so that is very, very important that the university also um, can see the, the transcript that you have actually passed all your modules. Okay, so the next question is, um, can this program be recognized worldwide as well as locally? Okay, very good question. Very common question that we get. Okay, with regards to your acceptance or accreditation in your own country, so whether you're in the UAE, Qatar, Oman, wherever you are based, it is very, very important that you do get in contact with your own education ministry to see the, the relevance and the acceptance of this qualification. The reason why we say this is the rules and regulations of attestation and accreditation do actually change um, quite significantly. So we do advise that you get in touch with your own um, you know, education uh, department, your own uh, authorities, and see if this will be locally accepted. In terms of the qualification itself, as mentioned earlier, it is internationally recognized. So if you do wish to um, immigrate uh, to Singapore, to, to Canada, it will be recognized um, in countries worldwide wide. Okay, next question. Okay, what is the difference between the PGC and the Masters in Education? Okay, all right, so the PGCE is a 60 credit uh, level program. So that means that it is 60 credits of a master's degree. A master's is 180 credits. So that's a full a full master's program. So the, the programs that you're gonna do or the modules that you're gonna do can be used towards a master's a full master's program. So the program that you're actually doing is actually on a master's level, okay. I uh, do not have an IELTS. Okay, so as mentioned, if you do not have an IELTS examination, there are other formal exams that can be undertaken in order to meet that particular English requirement. Again, do get in touch with uh, the academic consultant because they will be able to provide you with some guidance on how to reach that English requirement. 
Okay, very, very popular question is, um, will my certificate show that it is an online course? Absolutely not, okay. The program that you will do is identical to that if you were doing it on campus. So when you do go to the graduation, you will get the exact same degree certificate as if you were a full-time student doing it on the campus. It does not mention online distance learning on your degree certificate, nor on the transcript. Okay, and what is the duration of the course? Okay, this is a 12-month program and um, it cannot uh, be completed in, uh, in uh, less time than that. Okay, if you're looking to stretch your program, you can actually stretch it to approximately two to three years, but you can complete it very, very successfully in 12 months if you dedicate anything between 15 to 25 hours a week studied to the program. So very, very manageable. How can I contact my academic advisor? Okay, so your, your academic advisor is available to you via your Moodle. Moodle is actually the platform through which you will be studying. There are discussion forums, and there's a lot of um, communication in this discussion forum via the students and the tutor. Tutors are also available via email, so they may be contacted there as well. And they may also be contacted telephonically, provided that they are on the campus and, they, and they're not working from home, um, you know, if there's any COVID situation. But yes, they are readily available to be contacted. Okay, what is the duration of a master's program? Okay, so the master's program uh, varies. So you're looking at about uh, 36 months for some of the master's programs. Uh, but if you have uh, completed a PGCEI, then your duration may actually be shortened. Okay, so then again, it does depend on which university you will apply to do your master's in education. But remember your PGCEI should be able to give you credits towards that uh, full master's program. Okay, what would happen if I actually fail one of my assessments? Okay, very good question. Now, um, I hope that you will not be failing your assessments, okay? They actually are um, quite easy to, to pass if you really put in um, the work and the effort. But if you do happen to just slightly fail the assessment, the tutors will be able to give you a second chance to submit a further assignment, and they will be able to also critically advise you where you may have gone wrong. So uh, that is, is, is available to you. Okay, if I finish a module, okay, can I finish the course in less time? Um, as mentioned, no, you cannot um, finish the, the course in less time. It is advisable that uh, you, know, you do it in the 12 months. Remember, you do have the three modules and um, you know, this is more than enough to, to actually carry you for the whole year. Um, so it's very difficult to try and finish those three modules in uh, less time than that. Okay, so as soon as you do finish your um, first module and you submit your assignment, you then will get access to the subsequent module. Right, can I finish in six months? No, no, as mentioned, you cannot finish that um, in less time than that. Okay, all right, and let's see if we can see any other questions that I can group together. All right, I am from Ireland. I would like to know if I can complete further studies to be eligible. Is there any way it is not generally accepted? Okay, right. Um, it, as, I, as mentioned, this particular program is, um, is uh, accepted worldwide. So it does not really matter where you decide to go and live or where you decide to go and teach. Um, it is accepted worldwide. Just bear in mind, however, that if you are going to be going to any external country outside of the UK, you still would need to meet the teaching requirements for that particular country. Okay, so just bear that in mind. You would have to get in touch with the educational authorities in the country that you decide to go to. 
Okay, and let's just see if we do have any other questions that have come up here. Okay, so we do have right, right, and a very, very important question is about QTS. Oh, good day, good day. I'm Anna from the UAE. Thank you so much, Anna, for joining us. How do you get the QTS? Okay, fantastic, very good question. Um, with Q, this program does not come with QTS. So, how do people get QTS once you have completed this program? You can contact QTS directly. They would then have to look at your academic qualifications, what you have already completed in terms of a bachelor degree. They would also be looking at your um, working experience, and then they would also look at your postgraduate uh, certificate in education from the University of Nottingham. So they would look at an application in an entirety, and then they'll be able to advise you as to how to get that QTS. Okay, so unfortunately, the University of Nottingham nor Stafford will be able to assist you with the QTS process. That happens directly with QTS themselves. Okay. All right, so Damien, yes, I have just uh, actually um, mentioned the QTS question. I think you had the same the same question there um, as the previous candidate there. Okay, very good. All right, all right. So let's just see if. Um, okay, right. Okay, so Leanne's question would be, um, you know, why why should I do a PGCE and not go directly into the Masters? Okay, well, that's a very good question. So Leanne, what I'd like to do and is I'd like to actually see your um, qualification, number one, and I'd also like to see your CV. In the event that we can see that you would be qualified for a master's, okay, we would then advise you to then go directly into, into a master's level, okay. So we need to actually have a look at your working experience, how many years you have done that, what qualification do you currently hold, and then we'll be able to guide you as to the best um, you know, program for, for your choice. So please try and get in touch uh, with me or with your academic consultant, and then we'll be able to advise you on that. Um, we do actually look at each application um, as, a, as, an, in, as an entirety, but we also look at it individually. It's very, very important. Important, um, to actually see what you are currently doing. Okay, fantastic. Right, next uh, question. Let's see if I can scroll down here and actually see what we can do. Okay, very good question is, are there any uh, fee reductions? Do you have any sponsorship or scholarships? Okay, very good question. Um, if you are going to attend the program and apply via Stafford Global, yes, there is a uh, grant that we do provide to the students. So please do get in touch with your academic consultant and they will be able to advise you on the fee structure and they will be able to advise you as well as the grant um, that is offered to students that do actually come through through Stafford Global. Okay, so let's see if we can just scroll down here and see if we've got any other questions that we can look at here. Okay, um, will the face-to-face -face, um, lectures ever come through into the UAE? Okay, okay, I understand that question. Okay, so yes, previously, this is before COVID, um, the faculty would fly into the UAE and do the workshops face to face. Now, because of the COVID situation, the university does not permit their staff to actually travel at the moment. So yes, the workshops are still being done, but they are being done virtually, which is very similar to what we are doing today. Okay, so um, the, the program structure hasn't changed at all. The only difference is that it has now gone um, onto more of a virtual um, plane. Okay, so let me just quickly see if there's any other questions here that we can look at. Okay. 
Okay, question about the graduation. What would happen if I cannot attend the graduation? Yes, if again, if you cannot attend the graduation, as mentioned, you can ask the university to have it posted to you. So that's not a, a, not an issue at all. Okay, right. What would happen if, sorry, I just need to understand this question here. Okay, what would happen if I fail the entire program? Do I have to redo? Oh, no, that's, I hope that you're not going to fail the entire program. Okay, so as mentioned, that you can actually get in touch with your, your tutors throughout the, the, the studies. Um, if you are looking at, um, you know, passing it with a very, very good marks. As mentioned, you have to try and dedicate at least 15 to 25 hours uh, to the program. Now, if you are going to fail the entire program for whatever reason, um, the university would then have to look at your individual case and they will then be able to give you guidance as to when you perhaps can come back into the program um, or if there are you know, other circumstances that they can look at to allow you to complete the program. Um, there's a follow-up question to that. Um, can I take a break in my studies if something unforeseen comes up? Okay, absolutely. The university does understand that there might be circumstances beyond your control that cannot, you know, cannot uh, assist you to, to obviously complete the program. So if this is the case and you do need to take a break in your studies, you would need to get in touch with your academic tutor and you would need to get in touch with the university support team. They will then be able to advise you of your options and when you will be able to then come back into the program. Okay, so that is a, a possibility. Again, this is only obviously looked at on an individual basis. Okay, all right. So I think I've managed to actually group all the questions together. I do not see any other questions that have come through. I've managed to actually go through them quite uh, quickly. All right, so as mentioned earlier, we are currently accepting applications for the March intake. We do have limited places available, so please do get in touch with your academic consultant. Let us get this application into the university and get that very, very important unconditional offer for you. As mentioned, we could look at your CV um, and your application uh, individually if you require any further assistance on how to meet that English requirement, we will be able to advise you. The sooner you send these documents in, the sooner we can send it to the, to the university and secure your place. So very, very important that um, you get in touch with the academic consultant to get the process going. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining me this evening. I do hope to see every single one of you um, uh, on this March uh, 2022 cohort. And um, if you have any further queries, please do get in touch with me or with our academic consultant. And hope to see you in the March 22 intake. Good evening to everyone. <laughs>